Hey guys, it's Deborah. I wanted to talk to you about Christmas. Um, I am new to researching Christmas. I've always celebrated it. I never thought twice about it. <clears throat> but I want to touch on what I now call it as Christ Mass. Um, so yeah, I'm going to dig into it a bit. By no means am I 100% a scholar on everything and like a historical guru and all this with regards to Christmas, but I've done enough digging that things cannot be denied any longer. I call it Christ Mass because the word Christmas is clearly two words broken up, Christ and Mass. And I wanted to see the link to the Catholic Church because I'm like, Seems like it has something to do with the mass here, and that is red flag. So I'm going to just dive into a few different parts of the traditions that we do, and, um, you know, you can just figure it out for yourself and choose what you think you should do for yourself. But, um, yeah, I thought I would share. So let's get into the first topic, which is where it all began. So I'll just read this. It says, about how the beginning of Christmas came. In the third century, the Roman Empire, which at the time had not adopted Christianity, celebrated the rebirth of the unconquered sun, Sol Invictus, on December 25th. This holiday not only marked the return of the longer days after the winter solstice, but also followed the popular Roman festival called the Saturn sorry, Saturnalia. Um, during which people feasted and exchanged gifts. It was also the birthday of the Indo-European deity um, Mithra, a god of light and loyalty whose cult was at the time growing popular among Roman soldiers. And yeah, it says um, it has something to do with Saturn, so that's a problem right there. Anyway, um, so then it says the church in Rome began formally celebrating Christmas on December 25th in 336 during the reign of the Emperor Constantine, as Constantine had made Christianity the effective religion of the empire. So basically this Constantine kind of brought it in because we know all about Constantine. Well, I'm not going to get into all about him, but what we see here is that it was... Basically, everybody was celebrating the sun god and Saturn and Mithra and all this other stuff on December 25th. And so when Constantine made Christianity legal, then this day, um, I guess, became popular too. So it just kind of got thrown in there. And Constantine is pretty um, famous for mixing still his pagan god stuff with Christianity. So anyway... It brought me to this huge thing. Okay, look at this. The list of gods born on, from a virgin on December 25th. Okay, so these are all the gods that were born on December 25th. The gods. Horus, an Ethiopian uh, Sudanese god born December 25th by a virgin around 3,000 years before Jesus. Buddha, a Nepal god born December 25th. What a coincidence by a virgin around 563 years before Jesus. Krishna, an Indian god born December 25th by a virgin around 900 years before Jesus. Zarathustra, an Iranian god born December 25th by a virgin around 1,000 years before Jesus. Hercules, a Greek god born December 25th by a virgin around 800 years before Jesus. Mithra, as we just heard about, a Persian god born December 25th by a virgin 600 years before Jesus. Dionysus, a Greek god born December 25th, and I believe this is an article that is not Christian, uh, by a virgin around 500 years before Jesus. I think it's trying to like say that, you know, try to disprove Jesus. Um, Tammuz, a Babylonian god born December 25th by a virgin around 400 years before Jesus. Hermes, a Greek god born December 25th, let's celebrate, by a virgin, again, around 200 years before Jesus. Adonis, a Phoenician god born 20, December 25th by a virgin around 200 years before Jesus. And then they put Jesus Christ, who's a Roman god. That's what they put, born December 25th by a virgin around 3,300 AD. So clearly they were trying to disprove um, Jesus by saying all these other guys were born before, these other gods. Anyway, how is that a fluke? They're all born on December 25th. That day clearly is quite important to the enemy. 
So should we take that particular day and celebrate on it when all these other pagan gods are born on that day, they, you know, they say? Um, and research shows that, you know, if the shepherds were visiting the baby, it was during, I believe, the fall. Because, like, you have to go by, like, fe- um, harvest season. So being the dead of winter would be, or the beginning of winter or whatever, would be very strange because they wouldn't be watching their flocks by night. So is it no coincidence they <laughs> chose this very day to celebrate? And we as Christians are going to celebrate on that very day? Oh, geez, I did not know all of this, but the Holy Spirit, he loves to illuminate. So back to this mass, you know, the the Catholic connection. Think about it. When we say Merry Christmas, Merry Christ and Mass. Merry Christmas. Why do we say that? Merry (laughs) Christ and Mass. Those are the three most Catholic things you can say. (laughs) It's just funny that we never think about it. Merry Christmas. We don't say Happy Christmas. Well, we maybe some do, but... So let's link it to the Catholic Church. So through my study, I realized how it's linked is through the Eucharist because it's a mass. Um, And mass is about the Eucharist, which is the bread and the wine. We would, you know, call it communion, um, whatever the name, doesn't matter. But, you know, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. The difference is he said to me, I believe he said, do this in remembrance of me, as in it's symbolic. They are doing it literally. So I don't know the full details, but basically what they say when they hold it up has the word corpse in it, Corp- corpus, or something like that. Basically, it's saying, you know, this is his corpse and we're consuming it. And they're saying literally like it, the bread, something to do with, I can't remember the word, but it just magically becomes him. It's not figuratively or symbolic. It's literally him. So there is a level of... I had to say like cannibalism or whatever. Basically, it goes back to like the sun gods and stuff like that where you were, you would eat your enemy and whatever. So basically, the connection between Christ's mass, it's a mass is the the actual eating of Christ again, not symbolically, not in remembrance of his sacrifice, literally. This is the Catholic connection. How can anybody deny it? It's Christ's mass. It's a mass. So why are we celebrating it? I'm not even, you know what? (laughs) I'm not trying to, you know, ruin your holly jolly Christmas or whatever. I just, I can't, I I can't because like I basically realize all this now, like what am I going to do? I'm going to just deny it. I definitely don't think that's a good idea. So again, not trying to ruin your holly jolly time, but literally that's what it is. Like it gets to the point where you're like, when you realize stuff, you can't be like, oh, no, 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 it's not that. I mean, you can, but good luck to you on that one. Anyway, regardless, I want to share for those who do want to know, because for me, I do think I did a lot of things in ignorance and it says, you know, I'm without knowledge, my people perish. And there has been a lot of perishing in my life from ignorance. And I try my best to you know listen to the Holy Spirit now in my life so that I'm not anymore. So that's the link, the mass, and it's messed up. It's not in remembrance. It's like literal. So let's talk a little bit about the Christmas tree. I'm going to talk to you about its origins. So it says many Georgia Baptists had barely digested their Thanksgiving turkey before they were decorating their Christmas tree for a few many, sorry, few may be aware of the connection between the festive tradition and the great reformer as Christians celebrate this year's 500th anniversary of the Reformation. Now they're going to be talking about Martin Luther. The Christmas tree, special the Christmas tree, special carols and presents on December twenty fifth. Um, I just say December twenty fourth. These I can't read it. It's so small. Sorry. These much loved traditions are all linked to Martin Luther. Um, start with the tree. While walking through a snowy woods under a bright starlit sky, the beauty of the scene so moved Luther that he wanted to recreate it in his home. So he cut down a fresh tree, brought it inside, and decorated it with real candles. Or so the story goes. So we don't really even know. But anyway, so we're doing this because of Martin Luther. Because why the heck are we doing it? Clearly it has nothing to do whatsoever with um, with jesus's birth or remembering him i mean the bible doesn't say to even remember his birth in that way 
It's not one of the feast days or something that they significantly talk about. But on top of that, this tree deal, like what the heck? So it's so funny. I was re researching Martin Luther recently quite a bit. And there's stuff I definitely disagree with that he says. So I'm not just trying to like put him down, but it's because of him that we're doing this apparently. This this tree in our house because he walked through the forest and put candles on his tree. So this is like everybody does it now. Um, and I know people are like, oh, it's, you know, if you don't worship it, it's not pagan or whatever. And I get where they're coming from. Fortunately, there's too much messed up stuff with this whole thing. And I'm just here to just tell you what I researched. It's not about, ooh, just the tree is pagan. So basically, Martin Luther started this. So let's talk about what the Bible says. <laughs> this is pretty clear here. Jeremiah 10. Hear ye the word which the Lord spaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the sign of he signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, exactly what he did, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. He's saying, don't do this. He said, don't do this. He said, don't be like the heathen. And it's not like he said, don't cut down a tree and worship it. It says, don't deck it. He said, they deck it with silver and gold. It didn't say that they even worship it at this point. It just said, this is what they do. And he said, don't do it. He said, you know, learn not the way of the heathen. So literally, it's so <laughs> significant. It says, don't cut down a tree and deck it with gold and silver. So should we still do it? People confuse it with this verse that says, a person can use it for fuel. Oh, it's talking about cutting down a tree. Somebody cuts down a tree and a person can use it for fuel. He takes some of it and warms himself. Also, he kindles a fire and bakes bread. He even makes it into gods and worships it. Um, he makes an idol from it and bows down to it. Now, they confuse those two verses. So this verse is talking about making an idol out of a tree. Don't do that. But that other verse in a totally different book of the Bible says, don't learn from the the people around you from the heathens. It's saying, literally, don't cut down a tree and put silver and gold on it and fasten it to your home so it doesn't move. But I mean, how much more blatant? I am honestly, like, I've always had trees, but this is the second year now that I felt so, such a strong feeling. I knew nothing. I didn't know any detail about it or whatever. I Any details about why I didn't. I just felt something like I shouldn't put up a tree. So I did other decorations, but not that. But how much more blatant can it be? It said, don't cut down a tree and put gold and silver on it. So even if we don't know why, it says don't do it. So we just shouldn't do that. Like, it didn't say make an idol out of it. It said don't do it. It didn't, it didn't say why. So here's some quotes from Martin Luther, the guy who started this tradition. I'll say one here. It says, Christ committed adultery, first of all, with the woman at the well, about whom St. John tells us, was not everybody about him saying, whatever he has he been doing with her. Secondly, with Mary Magdalene, and thirdly, with the woman taken in adultery, whom he dismayed so dismissed so lightly. Thus, even Christ, who was so righteous, must have been guilty of fornication before he died. Now, this is Luther's quote from a book he wrote from some insert or whatever. I dug deeply because I didn't want it to be some fake or somebody just made it up or whatever. So there was some people who followed him, you know, they thought either he was drunk or he was taken out of context or whatever. I don't know. I have some other quotes. So I don't know, man. Like, I'm not here to speak ill of the dead. I just am saying, like, come on. How could he be the spotless lamb if he was a fornicator? Because he wasn't married to these women. So how could he be a spotless sacrifice? He never sinned if he was fornicating. Like, it clearly says that here. This was a quote from him. So he's the one we're following by putting the tree up. You see the link? We fight not against humans, but principalities. They know. Okay? So here's another quote. He didn't like the Jews. And that's known. That was not a maybe. What shall we do with the Jews? I advise that all of their prayer books and Talmudic writings are to be taken away from them. What shall we do with the Jews? I advise the safe conduct on the highways be abolished completely for the Jews. What shall we do with the Jews? I advise that their rabbis be forbidden to teach on pain of loss of life and limb. What shall we do with the Jews? Set fire to their synagogues or schools and bury and cover with dirt whatever will not burn, so that no man will ever again see a stone or a cinder of them. What shall we do with the Jews? Their homes also should be razed and destroyed. This is not maybe. The other one could have been maybe, but not this one. So to me, to follow after a tradition 
from him at this point is a problem, like this Christmas tree deal. So if you don't want to say it's pagan, if it's not in the shape of a male genital thing, that's a whole nother thing. The shape and the, remember, we're fighting against principalities. They know things that we don't know. Look, all I know is when you bow down to get a present, it does seem similar to, you know, you're taking, you, anyway, regardless, what about the fact that the ridiculous tradition, and it clearly says in the Bible, don't cut down a tree and deck it with gold and silver. It didn't say, don't shape it into an idol. See, that's where I got confused. Because people like, well, you're not shaping it into an idol. We are not worshiping the tree consciously, but it is funny that we put gifts below it. And when you have an idol, you do put gifts. What if it's like yoga, where like people aren't consciously worshiping gods when they're doing yoga, but what if it's something that we don't understand? Like, do you think Christians con Christians do yoga all the time? They're even doing goat yoga now. Uh, goat, God of all things. So basically, they don't know they're worshiping these gods, but how do we know that that's not affecting us, okay? So it literally just says, just don't do it. So like, how about just that part? Like, seriously, that's pretty blatant. Let's talk about something else about Christmas that I found out that it was illegal for a while, okay? So yeah, it was illegal in the US and the UK, and um, that's weird. <laughs> it was illegal because it was considered pagan. Now it's like, let's all rejoice. I mean, these are things that I said I'm just researching, not trying to ruin your holly jolly, as I said, but... Some of you, many of you probably don't even celebrate it. I mean, honestly, at this point, though, th we're at the end of days, so we got to get serious. Like, we got to get for real. So let's read this. In England, Parliament banned Christmas for 12 years from 1647 under Commonwealth. That ban was lifted only for it to be imposed in the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1660. The ban on Christmas became law in many places lasted until the apparently progressive state of Alabama was the first U.S. state to legalize Christmas in 1836, meaning there was almost 200 years during which it was criminal to celebrate Christmas in the U.S. Oklahoma became the very last state to make Christmas legal in 1907, despite the U.S. making it a federal holiday in 1870. So, and it was also, um, yeah, so in England it talks about there too. Yeah, so anyway, here's one of the, like, posts like in those days that they put up about Christmas. It says, for so much as the Feast of the Nativity of Christ, Easter, and whites, you, I don't know what it is, and other festivals commonly called Holy Days have been here for superstitiously used and observed, be it ordained by the lords and commons in the parliament assembled, that the said Feast of the Nativity of Christ, Easter, so Easter too, um, and whites unite i don't know what that word is and all other festival days commonly called holy days be no longer observed as festivals or holy days within the kingdom of england and dominion of wales so that was like the formal notice that they put out saying like there's other things saying it's basically pagan so we're not going to be celebrating it because people were getting drunk and other things and they, I guess they knew at that time it was pagan, whatever. So this is the second public notice. The observation of Christmas having been deemed a sacrilege, the exchange of gifts and greetings, dressings and fine clothing, feasting and similar satanical practices are hereby forbidden with the offender liable to a fine of five shillings. Now, being festive in general shouldn't be, you know, s satanic or something like that. But I think they combined it with what they they knew. So like I did some research and people, there was several families, huge families that were fleeing persecution in Europe um, from Catholic priests and stuff and came to America and they wanted to shun everything to do with Catholicism because it was known as a Catholic thing. So they like shunned Easter, they shunned, which is like Ishtar, they shunned, shunned the sun shunned the sun god practice with was the christ mass you know so they shunned all that stuff because they were like fleeing from all that so they also took it to another level i think where they were like you know there wouldn't be merriment like they didn't want anything so but i think the end result is they knew something that clearly we don't know <laughs> then it just kind of slipped in and everybody's like this is amazing and that brings me to my next point what the heck is it what are we celebrating here so the reason Christians celebrate Christmas is the nativity, is Jesus' birth. 
Now, that's the only part of it that even is anything at all relatable to anything. Because you can say St. Nicholas and all this stuff, but I've done the research. He was a Roman bishop who they th said, anyway, I won't get into that right now. So let's just focus on the main reason Christians celebrate was the nativity. And this crazy thing is, it's not even accurate. So I know a lot of people know this, but clearly Jesus was not a baby. If you just calculate it all or whatever, when the wise men visited him, he was like two and it was at a different time than the shepherds. So like it wasn't all at the same time from what I'm understanding. So this scene is not even reality. And isn't it just like the enemy to do that, to take like so much truth and just mix in a little bit of lie? Like if we want to remember Jesus, he said, do this in remembrance of me. He said, you know, um, you know, take the bread and the wine and remember me and this kind of stuff or whatever. There are ways to remember him. He didn't say pick a random day that is the same day as every other false god is born. Pick that as my random birthday. Do a bunch of traditions. And he said, I hate man's traditions and feasts and all that kind of stuff. He doesn't love that. There's a verse in James, I believe, that says the only religion is feed the poor and visit the the um, widows and orphans and stuff like that. That's religion. It's in James. Can't remember right now. But the point is, there's no tradition. And oh, by religion... um. That word actually means ritual. If you look at the ancient word, the only ritual I like is if you go and feed and help widows and orphans. That's the only ritual he wants. So I have to question, is he happy with Christmas? And if not, uh-oh. As I said, the only part of it that's even Christian is, because you can't say the tree or the decorations or the gifts or even St. Nicholas, I'll get into that, but is the nativity. And again, it's not even accurate. That's concerning. Like even the one part, I mean, you could say, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's not when he was born. It's not the structure. Like it wasn't those people, like the wise men weren't there. It's like we're presenting a lie and you say, that's no big deal. But when you pair it with all the other stuff, it starts to get to be a real problem. This whole thing is seeming a bit of a mess. Let's get to the messiest part of it all. The big man in red. That is the one. <laughs> where you combine the real problem. It's like, yeah, we're not worshiping the sun god anymore, maybe. And nothing is conscious. People are like, oh, we're not worshiping. We're not this. We're not that. It's not conscious, you know, like the Kanye music or whatever. It's not conscious stuff. But this guy, he's a problem. There's too many familiarities. Guy all in red who's omnipresent, omniscient. His name can be reworded to be another name. Santa can be someone else. And this is a problem. It's called wake up. <laughs> and I could say that to myself. I had my kids sitting on his knee like when my first one was born, like one or whatever. Like after that, I kind of stopped. It's the Holy Spirit. Like without the Holy Spirit, man, what could we do? Because that's who kind of illuminates this stuff. But basically, the whole thing just seems to be a mess at this point. And I think people are wising up. Um, but listen to this. <laughs> when you Google old Nick, it's a nickname for Satan. Old Nick. That's his that's a nickname. We call him Old Saint Nick. Cuz you cuz Nicol Saint Nicholas, right? But Saint Nicholas was it just has nothing to do with us. Like he was a bishop, again with the Catholicism, Roman bishop. He was a bishop. He wasn't some good guy. He did things, but he was known to be the saint of wonders that's his name because he was like apparently possibly omnipresent and think about it he sees you when you're not he no he sees you when you're good oh gosh i don't know the song <laughs> um he sees you when you're sleeping he knows when you're awake he knows if you have been bad or good so be good for goodness sake so he's kind of like omnipresent omniscient whatever there's something about the saint himself he was the saint of wonders like he did many miracles and he apparently he freed some prostitutes he paid he revived some children who were dead i did the research so there's these things and most of them are just they sit embellished stories i don't know if they're true or not i have no idea point is what the heck are we doing here people what does that have to do with anything and i told you the only thing that is christian is the nativity and um, that's not even accurate. So, and it's just tied into all this other stuff. I showed you all the gods that it was tied into, but yeah, like, again, this brings it back to the Catholic situation, Mary, Christ, mass. 
It's about Mary, it's about Christ, and it's about Mass, which is the Eucharist, which is really messed up because it's about literally eating the corpse. Like, it's kind of like the biggest slap in the face. So, I don't really know what to do with it at what to do with this at this point, but to just share that and say, I just want to like kind of share, and then you do with that what you will. And I want to also share a story of why we do things without thinking. So there was this story I heard once of a woman who she cut her Christmas ham. Every year she would buy a big ham and cut the ends off and and then roast it, her, her Christmas ham. Her husband was like, why do you cut the ends off? She's like, I don't know. My mom did it. And then and I think I've told this story before on my old channel. But anyway, I'll tell it again. And then he was like very interested and curious. Like, why would she cut the ends off? They looked perfectly fine. So he went to her mom and he said, why do you cut the ends off of your Christmas ham? And she's like, I don't know. My mom always did it. So I cut the ends off my ham every time I bake it. And so he's like, that's so weird. Why do they do it? So then he went to grandma and the grandma was, he asked the grandma, why do you cut your ends off of your, why did you cut your ends off of your Christmas ham every year? Because now your daughter's doing it and your granddaughter. She's like, oh, I did it because I only had a small pan. My pan was small. So I had to cut the ends off. It would have been a waste otherwise, but I had no choice because I had a small pan. So generation after generation, they are cutting their ends off their ham. When they have a decent sized pan, they can fit the ham, but they're still doing it. So the reason I give this story is because it shows what we are doing right now. Not thinking, but just doing the same thing that we were shown to do generation after generation. When at a certain point, like in the 19, early 1900s, like I think at when World War I started or something, they said that's when people started slightly celebrating Christmas again. So it's kind of like, this hasn't even been that long, but we're just doing it because we do it. And I think people are starting to like wise up a little bit, like, wait, what? But it's so big in the church. Like it's this massive event and there's trees everywhere when it literally says, don't cut it down and bring in your house. Now, again, I know we're not worshiping it, but again, it's consciously, <laughs> you're not consciously just like the yoga. You can say, I'm not consciously doing that. I'm not consciously like doing, you know, salute to the sun, but I'm still doing it. So if you want to just claim ignorance, I mean, once you know, that's going to be a problem because now you know. And even with the ignorance, if we're following the Holy Spirit, like if we're really close to the Lord, these things are going to start to just come apparent to us. Like we're going to realize that we are not of the world. We're just in it. So eventually, if we're walk, our walk is close with the Lord, these things will become apparent to us. It won't be that we can just say we don't know because the Holy Spirit will start revealing it. And, you know, there is a point where there, I, we're in a different sanctification process. Like, I don't know many things. There's still some things that I do that I'm not supposed to be doing. But once I know, should I just keep doing them? Just keep cutting the ends off the ham? I mean, I'm thinking no. <laughs> so at this point, I just... Do the best I can. I have small kids and we've celebrated Christmas all up until now. So I haven't done the tree for several years and I didn't even know why. But now I do. Um, and I'm just slowly creeping away from it. Um, I just celebrate winter and, you know, I decorate for winter and just festive times. And there are, you know, other things to celebrate at this time. Anyway, so let's just read this verse here. Second Peter 2. Uh, verse, where are we here? 20 it says, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter and the, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning for it has, it, it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. This is talking about salvation. Then after they have known it to turn from ho the holy commandment delivered unto them but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire so but i'm just relating that to going back to you know once you know something it's worse that if you didn't like the worst situation is that it'd be better off if you didn't know anything and i know there's a verse that talks about those who know the truth will be beaten with many stripes, but those who didn't know will be beaten with few stripes. And I can't remember exactly where that was. But once you know, there's a, you know, implication there. There's a, you know, responsibility to the knowledge that you now have. So just in ending, just in closing, I, sorry again for messing up your holiday season or whatever. Um, but there's so beautiful things. I put this beautiful winter scene because there's, God's creation is so beautiful um, in many ways. 
Um, and I don't love winter per se, because I don't love the cold, but there's so much beauty in it. The snow covered, like the snow is crazy right now where I'm at, and there's trees covered in snow look very beautiful. Even though it's, you know, cold, there's, they're looking beautiful, and there's still things to like do, like, you know, warm drinks, starting a fire, different things like warming by the fire, whatever. Like there's so many like nice traditions that you can still do with your family. Um, but again, the only ritual in James that Jesus said that he loves is that God respects and loves is <laughs> feeding the poor and um, the widows, the sorry, orphans and widows. So, I mean, there's no other ritual you really need to do um, it, when it comes to the remembrance. Um, you know, we know what how to remember Jesus. Um, and I already said, like, there's too many tie-ins. It's 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 a it's a mass. Mass is the Eucharist, and it's basically, you know, it's not it's not it's not okay. Um, and then there's the tree, which has so much pagan symbol symbolic stuff to it. But really, it was invented by Luther, Martin Luther, apparently, who said stuff like, "Do away with the Jews," and Jesus was a fornicator, and. Also, he just randomly thought we should do it, and it literally says, don't cut down a tree, deck it with gold and silver. It didn't say don't carve it into an idol. It didn't say don't worship it. It just said don't do the, what they do. It didn't even say don't worship it. It didn't even say that. It's just basically saying don't do it. So we shouldn't do it if it's like blatantly saying, it's not even saying like, don't cut down to pick flowers and put them around your house. No, it's, it's so blatantly what not to do. So, I mean, there's that. And then you also have the fact that the day that we've chosen happens to be the birthday of every, like, practically half the gods out there, the fake gods and sun gods and all this other stuff. And it relates to the winter solstice and Constantine and he mixed the pagan with the Christian and he built this huge tall tower with all these pagan symbols all over with Christianity too so you know he was conflicted he got baptized just before he died so I did a lot of research but I'll tell you right now this whole thing is just a mess I mean even the nativity is not legit it's not accurate so we shouldn't portray it over and over because we're not to lie so it's not actually an accurate portrayal I know what pastors say they're like oh you know, you're weak in your faith because you're just so strict and you don't understand this is not what it is. We just love Jesus and blah, blah, blah. I mean, again, then do your goat yoga. Do the goat yoga because salute to the sun. I mean, and you're going to do it. So that's all I can say. I can't do it. I can't mix. It says don't mix, don't mingle. Look at Esau mixing and mingle. Whenever anybody mixes and mingle, and there's so many verses on that, and I'm sorry I didn't prepare that way, but when you do that, it leads to a mess. <laughs> like, and once you know better, then you have to stop. Am I saying like, don't ever have a dinner with your family at Christmas time or whatever? No, I'm not saying you can't eat. I'm not even saying anything, really. I'm just saying for me, I know too much about this now, so I can't partake the same way. I can still decorate my home in a wintry season festive way. Like I still do wintry things and it's just, it really has, no bearing on this mass. I know a lot of you probably already know a bunch of this, and so it's just like, you, like, you know, hearing it again and just, you know, it's interesting to listen to again anyway, um, and to see hear like-minded people. But I think there's going to be people who didn't know this because I definitely didn't, and I think it's kind of like the wheat and tares, like separating, like who's going to mingle. And I'm not saying it's a salvation issue. I'm just saying like it's really. I don't know. He's opening eyes right now, and he's done it before. This is, we're not the first generation for him to show these things to. Like, it was illegal, for crying out loud. So we can't sit on our high horse and say, we know everything. Oh, yeah, we're the last generation, so we know it all. No, they, there was many people who got the Holy Spirit was in them, too, and was saying this it doesn't seem right. But what's pretty neat now is we're so bombarded with so much media saying this is what you should do, and it's pretty neat that the Holy Spirit just, like, fought through all that cloud. We're the generation that really it's just so cloudy because they were close to the time when Christmas was formed kind of, well not when it was formed but they knew the link between Catholicism and stuff like that and so there was like a close connection there but we know nothing it's just cutting off the ends of the ham like we would just do it because we do it but I think at this point it's about who will you serve like do you really love me and are you willing to put away your traditions the thing that really clinched it for me was this holiday spirit everybody's always talking about recently do you have the spirit the holiday spirit and people who are 100% not Christian are getting this holiday spirit I've said it before if the world loves it which they love them some Christmas people who are 100% <laughs> 
the farthest thing from Christian. Love them some Christmas, okay? And they are getting the spirit of Christmas. And I think there is one because Christians, I don't think they can give it up. Like many Christians, it's like, if I had told them this, they'd be like, there's no way. Oh my gosh, they would never. They can't do without their Christ, Christ's mass. They can't. And so maybe some can, I don't know. I just don't know. But anyway, I don't need the holiday spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. And thank goodness for that. So I just want to leave you on that note, just saying like, you know, there's wintry things. There's beauty in this time period. We have a lot to look forward to. I just pray that we go home soon and that, you know, the spring brings some, I just have this good feeling about the spring, but it could be any day, any moment that we, you know, we are caught up with the Lord in the air. But um, yeah, there's a lot just coming up very soon. A lot of different big things. But again, just uh, focus on the Lord and his real word. Read the word. See what he respects, what he loves. Does he love Christmas? I don't know the mind of God, but I know it does not seem to have much to do with him. So I guess that's it. And I hope you found it enjoyable and interesting and educational. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I guess I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a blessed day or evening. And yeah, have a really cozy winter night or well, for me, it's night, a cozy winter time and just enjoy a warm drink. And there's plenty to be thankful for. And I'll talk to you again soon. So until next time, God bless and Shalom.